Hey everybody, what's up? This is Eddie Wall and we are here at the Never Summer Factory in Denver, Colorado. I'm here with production manager Jared White and we've been here for the past three days building a snowboard from absolute scratch. Uh, absol uh, one good thing is that I've upgraded my safety goggles. Uh, pretty happy about that. They even have some little bedazzled jewels on the side. Bam! What you know about that? Uh, so, very excited. Now, today is the final day. It's the last day we're here and um, we are gonna go through the finishing process. So, I thought it was pretty simple, but now it's, it's seeming to be a lot more complicated than I thought. Also, before we start, we do have a phone here, so please comment any questions you have about how the board is made or the finishing process or anything like that, and we'll get them answered. So, Jared, take us away. All right, guys, follow me. First thing we're gonna do here is grab the board off, that we, uh, off the drying rack, the cooling rack that we built yesterday. And we're gonna get it back to the bandsaw and start getting it cut out and finished out. Is this all the, is that like all resin and, and uh, glue that's kind of been squeezed out in the process? Yep, exactly with that uh, 200 pounds of pressure per square inch that the, the press puts onto the board, it'll push out any excess glue. And uh, yeah, so uh, basically just the glue that is needed to hold the layers in there is still, is still inside the board. The rest is all gonna get cut off. All right, follow me. What up, Bentley? So Bentley here is gonna take the board and he's, we got this bandsaw here. Basically what he's gonna do, he's just gonna follow the metal edge of the snowboard right up flush against that bandsaw blade and, and it'll start to look like a snowboard shape here when he's done. It gets loud. All right, now he's gonna do the same thing with the other side. This is definitely a, a job that takes some finesse. You don't wanna hack right through that metal edge or anything. You gotta have it nice flush, but not too far into it. All right, thanks, Bentley. All right, now we're gonna take it over to Jesse. As you see on the board, we still have a little bit left on the tip and tail to cut out. So he's just gonna do that with a hand jigsaw. Whoa, this is gnarly, dude. So these is, it is crazy how much of a hand process this is from start to finish. These boards are completely hand-shaped. We have uh, Johan Osaroff, what profile? Rocker and camber, it's our rip shop profile specifically. So rocker between the feet with really deep camber pockets um, out past the feet. So you have real nice tip tail, edge hold. So uh, you still get that rocker benefit for powder flotation. Um, but you still have that, that edge bite at the tip and tail, so when you lie the carb down, you don't wash out. All right, we got a couple things. Dylan J. Thompson, I see you followed up with your plans for some super dope glasses. Those are steezy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dylan. I really appreciate this. Oh, wait, what's happening next? Oh, is this the, um, the magnetic thing? Yeah, it sure is. So right now, as you see, you can't, you can't really see where those inserts are. You obviously can't screw a binding down to it. So we just put a little bit of metal dust right there. And if you remember from yesterday, on one of the inserts for each side, it had a magnetic cap. So that magnetic cap has now attracted that metal dust so he knows where to start drilling. And then from there, he'll lay down a template, a jig, to go to, to, go to town and drill out the rest of those holes. All right, so as you can see, we are drilling the inserts through the top sheet now because of the little magnetic flakes that stuck to the magnet. Oh, we have a question. Denny Blasco, can you make a top sheet with a scratch and uh, sniff sticker on it? You know, you probably could. I don't know if the heat of the press would mess with the, uh, the smell of that scratch and sniff, but uh, hey, I, I like the idea. Maybe we should try it. <laughs> all right, so as you can see, we are screwing in uh, all the inserts right now, which is pretty important processing is how if the inserts are messed up, the bindings aren't gonna fit. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is crazy. This is, um, this should be called like the power tools stage. Gary, <laughs> Joseph, those goggles are fresh. What's the oldest chick you've ever made out with? Oh, that's a funny one. That's a funny one. Let's see. I don't know how old this girl I've ever made out with. I, I have no idea actually. Um, oh, Michael Sorger, um, I haven't been here for a bit. What shape is that board? 
So that is the prototype two shape, brand new uh, shape for the lineup this year. The proto's kind of been our our, uh, our board that we're really trying to make to push the limits as far as park board goes. We had the Proto CT originally, then it evolved to the Proto HD. Now this is the brand new Prototype 2. We've upgraded it, give it an asymmetrical side cut, so that deeper side cut in the heel. Really helps with locking into that heel cut turn. Um, true twin board, kind of revamped the nose tip, nose and uh, tail shape, so gave it a, a fresh look, but still that, uh, still that general Proto ride that everyone's used to. Um, have you guys, from Denny Blaschko, have you guys thought about making new mountains tools here that uh, they're taking out the Wi-Fi. Oh, and we're back. We're back. All right. Should we try to go over here? All right. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, here we go. All right. What's next? So, Gavin here, if you look closely with the camera, you can see there's still glue on the edges up at the tip and the tail. The side cut is still really rough. It still has bandsaw marks in it. So he's going to start getting all that glue off the edge in this process. First, he's just going to go around the tip and tail, get that edge all sharpened, and then we're going to take it over and clean the sidewall up. Here you go, Gavin. Let's get an up close. Oh, we got sparks. We got fire. We got flames. This is exciting. All right. So right now he's just smoothing out that... Uh, that sidewall and the tip and tail. Eric Martin, how do I get that board? Good question, Eric. I'll tell you right now. Tomorrow at Snowboard on the Block Festival here in Denver, Colorado, you can go to the Never Summer Tent. You can buy a raffle ticket, or you can get a raffle ticket from there. Also, you can pick one up today, but tomorrow we are giving away the board at Snowboard on the Block. So stay tuned to find out some more details about that. A lot of people are feeling this scratch and sniff uh, top sheet here. All right, so we're done with that. Let's keep moving. Time for sidewall. It is a this is a hectic zone back over here. I'll tell you what. There's a lot of crazy, uh, crazy ass things. Oh, here you go. Okay, so Casey now is going to take this and really clean up that P-Tex on the sidewall. Get all the bandsaw marks out of it. So he's got a similar machine with a similar belt, but this table's actually got an angle on it. So it'll, it'll correspond with the angle that we have on our sidewall. All right. So he's going to go ahead and put his water pump in for the first passes. It's a wet sand. So he's got his water on, and now he's going to grind away. More sparks. Oh, we got more fire. We got more flames. This is the crazy zone. There's just like, this is the real crazy workshop zone. There's just so much stuff going on. Just taking out all those blemishes. And if you're just tuning in, we're at the Never Summer Factory in Den Denver, Colorado. And we are going through the final stages of pimping out this board. Oh boy, we're getting, we almost got hit by some big wire over here. Uh, whoa, what? Oh, is he cleaning it? Yeah, exactly. He's cleaning the belts off, getting any buildup of P-Tex off of that. And now he's doing the second pass. So the first pass we do a wet sand, second pass there's no water. And this is going to now uh, really clean up, clean up that sidewall and make it nice and smooth. Bobby Stillings, I heard they're going to give away the board at the end of the video. Uh, yeah, we are going to give this board away at the end of one of the videos at Snowboard at the Block Festival. We're still lining up exactly how we're going to do it, but I know you can go get raffle tickets at the Never Summer Tent today and tomorrow at the Block Festival. I believe it starts around 5 p.m. today, maybe a little bit sooner. Justin Gunson, so cool to see from start to finish. Yeah, Gunson. So, yeah, he's definitely putting a lot of detail into that. We have to make sure that it's really smooth. And it uh, looks like he got it to perfection. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to put a little bit of bevel on that top sheet so uh, if a skier dude runs into you in a lift line, it doesn't just chip the top sheet up on you. So this is called top sanding right here. What's up, Ryan? All right, so he's putting it here in this little stand. And he's just going to go around the perimeter of the board real quick with a, a little sanding belt and just round that edge just a little bit so it's not quite so rigid.
All right, looks like it's been top sanded to perfection. Thanks, Ryan. All right, so uh, now where are we going? Now we're just back to the edge machine, and now he's going to hit the side edge. So there's still a little bit of glue there on the side edge. He's going to hit that, get it to a nice flat 90, zero 90 degree, degree edge there. We got Jake Tweedy saying, seeing, oh yes, we're getting fire shot at us. <laughs> the fire, we almost just caught on fire. That would, that would have been pretty funny. Leon Wilshire, uh, what are the best bindings for that board? You know, bindings really come to personal preference. I mean, around the shop here, a lot of us ride, uh, ride flux bindings. I know we got some guys who love Union. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to ask my personal opinion, I'm a flux guy. Perfect. So what's next here? All right. So now we're going to go over to base grinding. Um, if you look at the board closely here, you can tell it's still a little rough from die to die. So we're going to take it from an 80 grit all the way up through a 220 grit to get it real nice smooth before we apply the wax to it. All right. Let's head over to the base grind. Thank you. Um, this is like, this is the craziest process. I'm uh, John Ciaz. I'm on my fifth Never Summer. I will never, or I will never ride anything else. My third proto, repping hard. Hell yeah, John. Hell yeah. So over here, if you look around, we've got a bunch of different base grinders. We've got some old, old grind rights. These things are tried and true. Um, they make some stuff that's more automated, but we find just the things that are actually ran by a person uh, give us the best results. So. Yep. So we're going to start out running these with an 80 grit belt, and we're going to take it all the way up through a 220. Yep, just follow me over here to George. So this is George. He's a base grinding expert out here. He's our he's our Hulk. You want to give a gunshot, George? Oh yeah. Th this job makes you strong. So <laughs> so he's gonna start taking us through the process here. So we're gonna go through the process. I think we're gonna hit how many different machines? Three or four? Yep. Yep. Three or four different base grind machines to get that base perfect. Michael Garcia, I love my Never Summer. Um, Kyle Sullivan, P Tech Sidewalls. Props to the graphics department, Ski Steve Shizik. Um, this is being raffled off, Jeremy Hunt. Yeah, Jeremy, this board is going to be raffled off. We've built this board from a block of wood all the way up until what you see right now, and we are going to raffle it off at Snowboard on the Block Festival, which will be starting today. You can get some raffle tickets at the Never Summer Tent. And then we'll probably be giving the board away on Saturday at the Snowboard on the Block Festival. So you can get more details at the tent. Can you speak with an English accent for all of us in the UK? Of course I can, Ashley Davies. I can speak with an English accent all day long. Although maybe this sounds a bit Irish or British or maybe Australian. I don't know. Anyways, I gave him my best shot. All right, so now what's happening? All right, so now he's got he's got his next belt on here. This would be a 120 grit belt. So the first one was an 80 grit, which really gets that glue that built up underneath the board um, off. The 120 grit's gonna get a little smoother. And then from there, he's gonna take and actually do a little bit of hand grinding just to get the tip and tail really smooth, because that's where a little extra glue tends to build up in the layup process. Yep, these are big, meaty machines. You definitely have to be paying attention to what you're doing when you're running one of these base grinders. All right, now we'll follow him over here. All right, yet another machine. This will be like a little bit more of a broken in belt on the 120 grit. Um, I couldn't hear you earlier, but did you explain all the water that's shooting out? Oh, sure, I did not. It's a wet sand, so if there were no water, it would end up just eating through that plastic really quick, get really hot could start melting so yeah, the water is super important and it's not just the water it has an emulsion fluid in it as well and that prevents it from uh, from rusting the edges and and whatnot so that's why it's got a little bit of a green tint to it let's see we got a couple questions here Eric Gould I'm waiting for my or on my proto it's around there somewhere for sure we'll keep an eye out for it make sure it gets you safe 
Eric Akubo, I never will look at a never summer boards the same way. Respect. It is pretty insane, the process that they got going on here. Love my never summer Raptor and my chairman, Brian Minshew. Can you speak with a Texas accent? Hmm. I don't even know. how. To, what's a Texas like? Har, 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 ah, I have no idea. It's like, yeah, well, we're down here in Texas. Going to get me some uh, some grits. Going to get me a big some steak and potatoes. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. We got a couple of steers over here. We're going to hop on them. Uh, anyways, what's going on now? We're base grinding? Yeah, so we're still base grinding. This is the hand grinder. So he's putting just a little bit of extra pressure on anywhere that might have a little extra glue buildup. The big grind ride auto feed machines, those get pretty even pressure throughout. So he can just kind of tap certain areas, usually more the tip and tail. Just have a little bit of glue buildup. Just want to make sure any anything is off the base because um, we want it to be as smooth and perfect as possible. Sean Theodore always coming in with the technical questions. He says, how does the base flatness affect base grinding? Yeah, so that's a good question. Base flatness is super important. So on the presses, when we're building the board, we have uh, temperature differentials between the top press and the bottom press, and that's how we can uh, basically control how flat the board is. So it's super important to have the, the right ratio of temps to make sure the board comes off the press flat. If it's not off the press flat, it makes base grinding a lot harder. So we do, uh, we do rigorously write down all temps of every board, and uh, we track that all so we can be consistent um, you know, as we're building boards throughout the season. Oh, we got Justin Lindell saying shout out to Jared, one of the best managers ever. Boom. You the man, Justin. Let's see. I'm on my third Never Summer riding the F1 Premier. Best boards I have for huge Colorado powder days. Hurry up, winter. That's uh, Kurt Tanner. We're going through. I like, I like this section because the majority of the things shoot out sparks. And to me, that just like makes it seem way more cool. Uh, Don Haynes, that accent is terrible. Yeah, well, I don't know. I've never been to Texas. I don't know what, what people sound like down there. But uh, thanks for your honesty. Doing Aussie accent, you legend. All right. Crikey, look at the size of this snowboard. That's not a snowboard. This is a snowboard. Okay, wait. What's he doing right now? Okay, so he's switching the belt out. He just used a really broken-in 80-grit belt to get it a little smoother. Now he's putting a 120-grit belt on. It's a bit of a tedious process through here, just getting it up to uh, the smoothness that we are looking for. So this is 120-grit now. Yeah, it's really important with these machines to make sure they're, they're always running properly. We were actually just replacing some bearings this morning. We always uh, want to make sure the wheels, wheels are spinning nice and true. We don't want any extra vibrations in there. Um, that really helps with keeping a nice, super flat base. This is definitely one of the, the harder jobs to learn here in the factory. It requires a lot of, a lot of physical labor and, and a really good hand-eye coordination. Josh Rimmick is asking, this board that we're building now, is it a camber, rocker camber? So it's a rocker camber profile. Specifically, it's our ripsaw rocker camber profile, um, which means it's got a little bit deeper camber pockets on the outside of the feet, and it's kind of got our, our RC technology between the feet there. But those deeper camber pockets kind of give you the best of both worlds where you can still charge, lay a hard car without washing out. But when it comes to um, initiating your turns and powder flotation, that rocker uh, is where it's at. Denny Blaschko, I love the tip and tail shape for sure. That board got definitely has a really cool tip and tail shape. Let's see what else here. We got a couple more questions. So right now we are just uh, switching out different levels of sandpaper to get the most... Uh, Kind of like get the most, the best uh, base grind on this board? Yeah, exactly. So there's actually about 15 passes done on every board. So Whoa. there's definitely a, a lot going on with it. I believe he's on the 150 grit belt now too. And after this, it's going to go to the 220, which, you know, as far as sandpaper goes, it's 
not not too coarse, but it takes it so it gets that base just glossy smooth. So if you guys are just tuning in, we are at the Never Summer Factory here in Denver, Colorado. And we are on the final stages of building this board. If you haven't seen the other videos, this is our fourth day here. And we actually uh, have built a board from absolute scratch. And you can see the other three videos on the site, twsnow.com. Uh, do you do this by hand to every single board, London Bargarelli? Uh, yes, I believe every single board, correct? Yeah, every single board goes through this exact process, and they're doing about 200 to 250 boards a day through here. So we have four guys working in this department getting them through base grind. So it's not all George all the time, but, uh, but he's definitely the one with the most expertise. John Jonas, how do I win this board? So we are going to raffle this board off at Snowboard on the Block Festival here in Denver, Colorado. You can get tickets today and tomorrow. Uh, some raffle tickets at the Never Summer Tent uh, at Snowboard on the Block. And then we are going to be raffling off the board on Saturday at some point. We're going to uh, stay tuned for more details about that. You can find out at the Never Summer Tent. So Snowboard on the Block is um, starting tonight. They're going to have a bunch of big bands playing. They're going to have a snowboarding contest tomorrow. They're premiering tons and tons of good snowboarding movies. So it's going to be a pretty insane festival. And we are getting down to the final stages of base grinding this board. Will we see this board all the way through to the mountain test? <laughs> well, who, whoever going to get this board, they're, they're going to have to mountain test it because we're giving away this board uh, just tomorrow. This exact board that we built from just a, a block of wood only three days ago. So it's pretty insane to see it transformed into this. Joe Horger, I've been riding for 25 years. The last 15, I've been on a Never Summer. These boards are bulletproof. Oh, yeah, Joe. All right, now uh, let's find out what we're doing next here. Oh, here you go. So we're working on some machinery here. We, uh, a lot of us wear a lot of hats here, so the guys who are using the equipment every day are the same guys working on it, but we're always making sure everything is dialed in. I think they're putting in some new bearings right now on this for a base grinder, so making sure everything is, is up to par. All right, perfect. All right, and we got another one of these little blowy things. Uh, here, you grab the mic. All right, so what we're doing right here is we're just drying off the boards. We've got to get all the emulsion fluid off of there before we apply the wax. And then we're going to go through the grading process, which is the kind of the last step of quality assurance before we uh, peel the board, bag it up, and get it off the snowboard on the block. All right, so John's just going to go through. He's going to squeegee it off, wipe it down with a towel. He's kind of looking through at this point, too, to make sure nothing nothing looks out of whack. He, when he gets to the base, he's going to really make sure it's smooth. If, uh, if there's ever any roughness or anything like that, we'll send it right back to the base grinders, clean it up a bit more. But, uh, but yeah, this one's looking nice. All right. We got a question here from Denny Blaschko. Will a degree in mechanical engineering get me anywhere within the field of snowboarding? Um, you know, it sure could. A lot of the guys here, like even our engineers started in the factory. Like this is kind of a, a business where you really work your way up from, from the ground up. But, uh, you know, we've had guys who were going to school for engineering, started out as an intern here um, and, and end up, you know, working in the core shop, running CNC's. And, yeah, one of our head designers actually started here in the factory. And now he's uh, designing all the shapes of our snowboards. All right, here we go. We're, we're moving on. How would one go about getting a job at Never Summer? Jake Varen. Uh, we've been answering that question a lot. Uh, a lot of people asking about getting jobs. And, um, yeah, just go uh, onto the website, maybe find the contact info, and then hit these guys up. So, Jared, what is happening right now? Because this looks kind of cool. Yeah, this is our hot wax roller. So this is a, a homemade device that we can made. It's basically like a, like a grease vat, and it's got wax in there that's melted up with a heat element. Then we have a roller with a neoprene sleeve that we've dropped in. And he's going to just roll a hot wax applicant on that and uh, be ready to slide on the snow. He's just kind of buffing it out a little bit, making sure the, it's, the wax is uh, evenly placed on that roller. Yep, so this is going to give it some 
Just a real nice, real nice shelf appeal. It'll be a, a nice wax for the first few days. Whoever gets this uh, is riding it. Right now, though, that wax is coated on real thick, so we'll take it over to our buffing machine next, and that's going to uh, really mat that wax in, kind of impregnate it into the pores of the base, and uh, make it look nice and glossy. Get a get a good good close look at this. So this is just kind of smoothing out that wax that he just put on. Yeah, we're buffing it in. It's basically like a Scotch Brite belt that's on there. It's got that wheel that's weighted, so it's putting a lot of pressure on the board to that. And uh, as you see it come out, it's looking looking real shiny. It's still a trip to me that just you know only a, a few hours ago this board was just a, a solid block of wood, and now it's uh. It's essentially looking like a, a perfect brand new snowboard. That's right. Yep, a lot, a lot of hands on it. We've had about 60 people touch this board already through the process. And uh, yep, now we have a snowboard that you can take up the mountain and shred. Felix Antoine Verrault, that smells though. That, dude, actually it's funny because it smells super good right here. Because this is the waxing station. And it just smells like that buttery snowboard wax, which uh, I'm always hyped on. Wax that naughty base and impregnate that porto. Oh, geez. <laughs> the impregnating was yesterday. We impregnated the hell out of this board. Um, do you guys have any requirements for people that want to work at Never Summer? Jake Verin. Um, well, you know, you know, there's no specific, uh, specific job requirements. You know, you have to be able to work with your hands. And as part of our interview process, basically, we'll... Uh, We'll actually kind of put you in the factory, have you spend an hour or so like in the position we're hiring for, just kind of see how you do. So a lot of it's a skills test. All right, so now we are headed over to one of the final stages of a snowboard. Is it, is it my, am I right? Yeah, you are. So this is going to be that, that second step of quality assurance. Adam Baker here is going to go look through the board. Say what up, Adam. How's it going, guys? Yeah, he's going to look everything over, make sure there's no imperfections in the board, make sure the edge is sitting nice and tight against the base, no uh, no gaps in the die. We want to make sure the base grind's nice and smooth. The wax is evenly spread. We want to make sure that edge seam is nice and tight. Um, and that's the first thing he's going to do. And then from there, he's going to peel the board, scrape the board. Um, if there were anything wrong with it at this point, we would we would mark it and we'd kind of grade it as to whether it's just a cosmetic issue or if it's something that's going to actually affect the performance of the ride we'll never put it on snow we'll give it to a shop to make a bench out of or give it to an employee to hang on their bedroom wall something like this we we never really throw away anything we just uh it's always valuable to somebody he's hand buffing it now to just get any little imperfections or wax clumps out of it throwing on a warranty card we, we carry the best warranty in the biz we've got a three-year warranty on on all of our snowboards now he's looking over the sidewall the edge Making sure all the rubber is there. If any rubber is put on crooked, it might might get out of the perimeter of the board. Basically, just uh, really nitpicking uh, that builder to make sure he put it together right. When there is a problem, say say there is an issue, a big top in or something, he'll usually come get me, and then I get to go uh, get to go slap the builder around a little bit and get him, try to get him on point. We really do a good job of tracking our quality to make sure we uh, we minimize any issues. You know. And what is this exact? This, this station called again? So this would be called the grading area. So, yep, like a teacher grades homework, Adam's uh, grading the snowboard, making sure it's an A+. Plus. If you're just tuning in, we are um, pretty much on the final, final stages of finishing this board, the Never Summer slash Transworld 30th anniversary board that we uh, have been building over the past four days. If you want to see the beginning processes, all three of the other videos are online, twsnow.com. So make sure you go check those out. If you want to win this board, you can uh, get a raffle from the Never Summer Tent over at Snowboard on the Block Festival. Oh, wait, is this is he taking off the sheet now? He is. He's taking off the mask. So uh, now we're going to see our, our nice, clean, clear top sheet. Right now it looks a little hazy. It's about to look super crisp. Oh, snap. It's like a snake shedding its skin. Dude, this is, oh, this is the, the buttery part. To me, I feel like this is where the board, like, becomes... A final, super brand new, nice snowboard. Yeah, you have to be real careful peeling that tape. I, I've spent some time over here, and I've definitely punched myself in the face a few times because that, that tape does like to break. So, so yeah, Adam, you did a good job not punching yourself. So now he's going to take a razor blade that he has in his hand, and he's going around the perimeter of that board just getting any lip that might have been on there, just any ridge, just making sure it's really nice and rounded. Um, 
and uh, to our top finish quality. Does Never Summer sell blemished boards, Joey Blades? Um, you know, we do have a small amount of blemished boards, very small percentage. Those will usually end up going to shop employees who rep our boards or, uh, or snowboard instructors, people that are, that are on them every day and, and good people to you know, help, us, help us pump our product and inform the world about them. And now I see he's windexing the top sheet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kind of wax on, wax off, getting it rubbed in, making sure uh, any sort of haze or film that was left in there from, from the heated press is off of there. He's going to blow that off now. He's also looking at the inserts, making sure no glue got in there through the building process. If so, we'll tap them out. And at this point, we've got a snowboard. He's going to throw it in a bag. But before he does that, Eddie, we're hoping you might, uh, might throw your signature on there. Oh, okay. You down? I'm down. All right, let's do it. I mean, since I practically built this snowboard, I might as well sign it. Uh, where should? Oh, okay. I'll, right on the tip. All right. <laughs> oh, that's like one of the best signatures I've ever signed. <laughs> All right. So now what? So now Adam's going to throw it in a bag. We're going to take it up to the shipping room, and then we're going to run it straight over to a uh, snowboard on the block, get it, uh, get it ready to give away. But, hey, uh, and after Adam begs us, I think he might have had a, a question for you as well. But yeah, this is basically this is the process that we do in every single one of our snowboards. So you guys have basically seen the, seen the full tour now. It's about as detailed as it gets. But yeah, Adam, did you have a, a question for Eddie? Yeah. Huge fan. I cannot say enough about you. Tell you the truth. Would you sign oh. my DVD? I can't believe I still have it. It's gone through the ringer over 10 plus years. Oh man, this is amazing. And that would be a great honor. Oh, thank you so much. So we got a video gang's throwback here. That's pretty awesome, dude. Thank you so much. I really appreciate thank you. it. Oh, dude! Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Oh man, this is awesome! I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting all red here, just to match my sick ass glasses. Dude, thank you again, dude. Pleasure to meet you. All right. So Adam just put the finishing touches on the board, and I mean, right now, we have a brand new Never Summer board, and it's crazy to think. You know what? Maybe as we're walking back to the shipping area, I think maybe real quick, one thing I want to do is. Look at, let's look at one of the core blocks because just a few days ago, I want to see where this board just came from. And here we go. We're walking, we're walking, we're walking. Oh, here we go. So, so check this out. This is what I think is really, really cool. Get caught up in the wires here. Caught up. Okay, so this right here, just, uh, I mean, essentially a few hours ago, uh, we we span this out over a few days to make it a little bit more uh, watch friendly. But I mean, re literally just a few hours ago, this block of wood was this brand new snowboard. And uh, I don't know, that's that is pretty crazy to think about. Uh, this is the first time I've ever seen it start to finish, so I'm I'm pretty excited. Been snowboarding a long time and never seen this whole process. So uh, all right, so now where are we headed? All right, we're going to the shipping room, so I like to call this room the uh, the candy shop. It's where all the finished boards go before we ship it out, whether it be to one of our international retailers, domestic retailers. They all start here. We've got these big-ass crates here right behind. Right behind. These are all of our boxes over here that are going out to shops. We've got crates right behind Eddie here. That's where our big shops go. We've got some of our Grom fans over here <laughs> getting ready for a tour probably. It's a lot going on. All right, so... We basically, we, through finishing, typically we'll have about 60 boards on each rack. So this is how they come up. They'll be doing uh, groups of 60. We do about four racks of snowboards a day. So, all right, follow me here behind the blinds, and we'll be in the shipping room. What up, Everett? What up, Everett? How you doing, Doug? All right, man, doing good. We got the board. You got to get the snowboard on the block. It's starting in a couple hours. We got to get this to, to a lucky winner. Okay. So here we are. But, yeah, this room right here is where they stage all the orders. They get them out. They get them boxed. Get them out to all of our retailers around the around the world. All right, this is Harry over here. He's our shipping extraordinaire. Did you have something, Harry, that uh, that you wanted to ask too? 
Yeah, we've got a few uh, super fans here, Eddie. So, uh, <laughs> nobody told me this was happening. I swear. We did not ask permission, so hopefully Eddie's cool with this. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's been an honor having you guys here. Thanks a lot for uh, taking the time to, to check out our factory. Yeah. Thank you all, all you viewers for, uh, you. for following us around and, and checking out how we make our boards. Yeah, and hey, thank you so much. A pleasure to meet you guys, and thank you for being part of the process. And so now the next step is to bring this over to Snowboard on the Block, and that's what we're doing. We're headed over there, Denver, Colorado. If you're in the area or you have an airplane that you can get on real fast, uh, come and check out. Snowboard on the Block, there's going to be m movies, music, uh, premieres, and uh, this has been the Never Summer Tour, and we are giving away this board. If you want to see the whole process, the other three videos are on TWSnow.com. This video is going to be up there soon. Please uh, feel free to share it, send it out to friends and stuff, but if you do want to win this board, come to Snowboard on the Block, find the Never Summer Tent, get yourself a raffle ticket, and then we are going to be giving this away on Saturday. So uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Jared, Thank you for being like the best tour guide of all time. This has been an eye-opening experience for, uh, for all of us, and we appreciate it. Is that it? Anything else? All right, we are good to go. See you guys.